So we're back, and it's another episode of our conversations with Hope City, the new church plant helping persons to find their hope in Christ no matter what they face. All right, come as you are, no perfect people allowed. So I am Keegs, and I'm your host, and I am here once again with Pastor Jay, as we do week after week. Right, just going into the different topics, relevant conversation, not just from church perspective, but just from the man on the streets perspective. So right now we're still in our Easter series as we've been exploring all of these statements Christ made while going through his crucifixion journey. We dealt with forgiveness, we dealt with salvation, we dealt with relationship, we dealt with feeling forsaken, and then last week we dealt with peace. And um, right now, based on what we're going on, what we're going through, as you can see the format we're doing the videos in, through the video chat, we're still under the threat of COVID-19. And this was so relevant because it wasn't just a literal thirst, but being um, or having that thirst for just whatever you might need, maybe safety, maybe shelter, maybe just hope, peace of mind, or simply just that thirst. For God Himself. So as we continue our Easter series, we're heading into week six, and we're heading into the sixth statement that Christ would have made through His crucifixion journey. So I now hand you over to Pastor G. Hey, thanks, kids. Um, good recap. Um, I think that really summarizes where we are, not just for Easter, but as a as a nation and as a people. Maybe not even a nation, as a as the whole earth, the globe is affected by this COVID. Um, the sixth statement is a real simple one. It is from John 19, verse 30. And it is at the point at which Jesus is about to give up his life. He says, it is finished. And, right. you know, it is finished. And I'm sure we really want this COVID situation to be finished. <laughs> it is. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Um, you know, my, my, my dad used to always say that the cross and Jesus being crucified was one of the greatest contradictions. And the, the reason he would say that is because you, just even in our current situation, when we look at death, um, we look at that as a defeat or uh, the, the, the end, the yeah. end of our yeah. person, you know? Yeah. And there's so much sorrow for losing people. We know that, we understand that. So that, that doesn't change. So you just imagine for Jesus' His family, because his mother was there, as we spoke yeah. about in one of the earlier episodes. His um, friends, his disciples. So he had a lot of people looking at him. And he says this word is finished. It seems, and like by every natural standard, like that's the end. Something sorrowful is defeat, you know, for the, 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 the Son of God to be defeated that way. But, you know, Jesus knew it was not the end. It was actually the beginning of hope for us and that's yeah. why i still think it's so beautiful in this time to talk about this um first of all kids i want to say that when when christ says it is finished it was not like he was just um summarizing this is the end of the journey you know it may seem so literally but actually or just take it into a little greek here right the word that was used in the original language was telestai right and literally translated it meant finished so that's why they use that in scripture finished, however yeah. within context within the greek context that word is used to say that like when somebody had a debt and it is it is paid oh. and that's the word they, they use to tell us okay. to say it is finished so when christ says that and he uses that word it's not like this is the end or whatever it's like he is saying that Everything I came to pay for, everything that I came to do, the books, the, the accounts are settled. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it is not. It's not. It is finished from a defeated standpoint. He is yeah. saying, like, listen, it is finally finished. Every, the accounts, the the balances, because that's what the word is used for in yeah. ancient Greek. Right. So yeah, he yeah, says yeah. that. He is. He is basically saying to the world, like, listen. Everything I came to accomplish, everything that there's no there's no stone unturned, it is finished. Yeah, I, I understand. You know, as accounts, man, 
So from yeah, that perspective, right. sometimes two on work, sometimes on work, you're trying to close off your accounts or something, had a balance and Bal- take your whole day to find that missing balance and you find it done. It's like, all right, ah. it's finished. But it's not done yet. Yeah, the rest of your accounts still to do, <laughs> things still to do. But that, you know, that one thing that you had to get done to start that again is right. really what I had to do. All right, something that just came to mind too. Um, hopefully, it don't take you too much off course, but we we going through the statements that Christ made, and yes, we have statements in the Bible. Just what is your thoughts on the possibility of Christ having said other things or any more things while being on the cross that we don't have account of? Okay, um, that's a real good question. Um, maybe there will, um, but you see, remember, of my faith is that every that the Bible was. It was written by men, but it was authored by God. Right, but all right. So these men were under the influence of the Holy Spirit, and they wrote not based on their understanding or anything. So I believe like everything that the Scripture contains is what God wanted for us. Okay. Right. You know, right. whether to edify, to correct, to challenge, you know, to convict our hearts when we're doing wrong. So everything. So even those things, because I mean, listen, there's a big chunk of Jesus's life that is not captured in the Bible. True. You know, and a lot of people trip up over that and stuff. For me, when you look at the history of how the, the Bible came together, true, like I think we had mentioned this in one of our previous episodes, but um, over the, the hundreds of years, separated by time and geography, um, the prophetic part of it and stuff, it's just, it's, the Bible itself is so supernatural the way it was brought together. You okay. know, so yeah. so yeah, that's just my, that's just where I, I land on it with. But yeah, there may have been other things, but God, in His wisdom, gave us what we needed to, to right. do this so, life. To bring us back now, um, as we talk about the crucifixion, right? And as we see, we hear with that statement, Christ is on the cross right. now, and He says, it is finished. Right. For us, here now, in the year 2000, all right? Not back <laughs> there with Christ on the cross. Yeah. How does that translate to, to any benefit to us right now? Well, you know, <laughs> the, the thing is that, especially in the situation that we face, right, there's so much uncertainty. You know, we talked about it first, you, you, you mentioned it really well, that, you know, right now people want safety and stuff. We want, um, we want our, and, and at the time of this conversation, we've had like five or six deaths already, right? Because of this COVID-19 virus. So there are a lot of people who are going through a lot of hurt and pain and suffering right now in our country. The thing about it is when, when Christ says it is finished, it was not it was not promises of this life. It meant for our eternity. When Christ died and when we talk about the, the debts that were paid, he paid for our sins. Um, not that we would always have the best life on this earth, um, but knowing that our hope and our future is in him. For those who, who confess yeah. Christ, uh, and you know, acknowledge him as Lord and Savior. And so, how the how it relates right now is even though, and, and this is the part that I love. At the time of the cross, kings, everyone looked at that as the darkest time. Who were connected with Christ? Yeah. It looked like a defeat because he was supposed to be the king of all kings. That's what he yeah. said he was. You know, that's who he said he was. And yet he is dying on a cross and everyone is looking like, okay, well, where's the king now? Because yeah, yeah. they mocked him and even said that, you know, if you are the king of the Jews, then, you know, yeah, save, you yourself. To save yourself, etc. right? What looked like something so dark, God still had a plan in the midst of it. Yeah. For me, what I would encourage people, why it's relevant today, in the midst of all the hurt and the pain and the fear of this whole COVID-19, I would challenge you to remember that even in the darkest moment, God still has a plan. So even what looked like the feedback then, so if I, I, I really believe kids that coming out of this, mm-hmm. those who stay close to God will come out of it stronger. And even with some losses, even with, because it, it, it will go and change our life. There's yeah. no doubt about yeah. it, yeah. right? And for those who maybe lost loved ones, so for me, I don't know what the future holds, but God forbid that any of my family gets sick or anything. My first prayer is that, you know, that they are right with God. So that mm-hmm. even if I don't see them, God forbid <laughs> that they go yeah. through this. Um, 
my hope is knowing that there is a greater life to come. So that's where it comes in, you know? Yeah, um, for me, I, I'm not as optimistic as you there in terms of, you know, persons coming closer to God and stuff because in my observation, I see a lot of us, yes, we have more quiet time, but mm-hmm. we find ourselves trying to fill it up and fill up the space with a lot of other different things and different distractions. And right. Apart from conversations with you, I haven't heard many people talk about, you know, improving the relationship with God or even getting into the group or anything like that. Everybody right. looking for a movie to watch or a game to play or something to do. Right. right. But um yeah I there with you and I you know I could keep you here and have that hope. But I just say all right now I feel like we still at that stage where we still trying to retain just the, the normal scene. You know? We're not really so what you what you said there was the nail hitting the nail on the head. Everyone is still fighting to try and keep their life looking normal. Yeah, yeah. But I believe that as, as the time goes on, all the things that we've propped our life with, the things that we felt were so important, just look at the kids, the things that we used to be most occupied with means nothing right now. Yeah. Right? The things that people used to put on us as if it's the most important things, whether the jobs, whatever. All of a sudden, you in a, your home with your family, Thank God if you have a good relationship with your wife and your kids and all that stuff. But here's the thing, there's so much more important things in life. But just to your point, I know many people now speaking that way yet. But I think the longer this goes on, is yeah. is the more things that we thought were important, the more things that we keep pulling on trying to keep normal. It changes always difficult for people. Yeah. Even in my own life, like even adjusting to this is difficult. You know, because I mean, like, I, I, I joke in with my, my, my wife and I say, like, you know, the kids, like, they're everywhere, anywhere, <laughs> too. <laughs> you know? Yo, I, I tell them, I say, I go, in, I go into the bathroom. I tell the whole family, I go into the bathroom. Two minutes later, I hear somebody turning the knob by the door. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, yeah. it's like, you know, your personal space, everything that like, we all have different personalities, but we forced into a situation and I think to your point Keith, is that yeah maybe we're not speaking now but I want to challenge them to start looking to see what really matters in life and your walk right. with God should be number one your time with your family building back restoring relationships um, I started to know my daughter in a different way and I I, yeah. tried, I had a pride that I thought I used to give my children lots of time but in this situation, I am realizing, okay, wow, I am discovering this child. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So for me, even it, it, it's mind blowing. And, and so we gotta, you know, so I hope this conversation just does that, like open up a different view. Instead of all the doom and the gloom, all the things that we are uncertain about, put your hope in Christ. Um, look forward. I still believe there's so much opportunities for us personally even as a community, as a nation, to come out of this stronger and, dare I say, even better when this is all done. All right, nice. Well, um, yeah, this seems like a nice place for us to wrap it up there. Um, folks, you just see past the jail game of Hope City. Remember, even in these dark times, out of the darkness comes the light, just like Christ on the cross, then leading to the resurrection. And very same way, just see the himself. We have some good things, some good sparks coming out of this whole COVID 19 situation. So, this has been yet another conversation with Hope City. Keep tuning in week after week as we continue to talk to them, find out more about Hope City, find out more about their plans. And once again, remember. <laughs> Come as you are. No perfect people. Hello. See you next time.